Hey. Ah, good day. Music is a Journey episode 10 is about to begin. We don't have time for a really long introduction as we normally do, so we're just going to jump straight into it. But as always, we have to say cue the music. So here we go. <laughs> And that's enough of that. Welcome to episode 10 of Music is a Journey. Doing a short introduction today because we have a lot to talk about. Probably going to have to split this into two parts again. Today we are talking about artists Guy Manning and Johannes Lully. We're going to start with Guy Manning and the reason is because how I got to know about Guy Manning was a bit like a journey and that's exactly why I call this video series and the blog Music is a journey because it's about how I discover new music and new artists by following a route through others. And in this case here, we started this video series with English guitarist the late Colin Tench. And from there on, we moved on to people with whom he had recorded, either uh, as a guest on their albums or in groups with them or with them appearing on his albums. And then we worked on words towards other people who had collaborated with those people. And so how I got to know about Guy Manning, well, let's take a look at this nice little chart that I've prepared here. Okay, so here we see in the box in the lower right, here's Colin Tench, and there are all these little lines going out connecting him to different bands and different uh, musicians. And then we follow this one line here that goes up to Caribou and Oliver Roosing in Caribou. And then from there, um, we follow the two lines going up to Sean Timms and Merrick Arnold, because both Sean Timms and Merrick Arnold have guested on Carabao albums. Then those two, Sean Timms and Merrick Arnold, we can follow the lines up to Dominic. And it's here in Dominic where we meet Guy Manning. Now, the interesting thing is that Guy Manning also played in The Tangent with Ronya Stolt of the Flower Kings. And because of all these different connections, we can almost do a uh, six degrees of Colin Tench. For example, how is Colin Tench connected with Dream Theater? Well, okay, my, um, Mike Portnoy was the former drummer of Dream Theater, and he plays in Transatlantic along with Ronya Stolt. Ronya Stolt played in The Tangent with Guy Manning. Guy Manning plays in Damanek, with Sean Timms. Sean Timms was a guest on Carabao's album Holofinium and Colin Tench was also a guest on that album. So through that way we have now connected Colin Tench with Dream Theater. But anyway, we're not talking about that today. We're going to talk about Guy Manning and let's take a look at his career. Guy Manning basically started his musical career in the 1980s. Um, he is from Leeds originally. And in the 80s, he started a couple of bands, one called Let's Eat and another one called Bailey's Return. And I can't help but wonder if there isn't some kind of connection. For example, like, let's eat at the buffet and then Bailey's Return is Bailey going back to the buffet for seconds. Or maybe not. Anyway, so Guy Manning was later on asked to join a band called Through the Looking Glass, which later on shortened their name to King Glass. Yes, very inventive the British are. Okay, and then from there on he joined up with Andy Tillerson's band, Gold, Frankincense and Disc Drive. And then the two of them worked together on a project along with Hugh Banton, the keyboard player for Vandergraaff Generator. And they did an album called No More Traveling Chess, which was, as I understand it, mostly Peter Hamill covers plus some original material. And then this project evolved into Parallel or 90 Degrees. Now Guy Manning plays on the first album, In the Corner of My Room, but by the second album, After Life Cycle, Guy Manning had already left to start his own band, Manning, which we'll talk about in a bit. But he did come back, and um, he appears on Parallel or 90 Degrees' third album, The Time Capsule. Only he's just, as a guest here, he contributed uh, guitar playing and some backing vocals for about three tracks on here. Parallel or 90 Degrees, their older albums are pretty hard to come by, so good luck in finding one if you don't have one already. But it's rather interesting music, and I feel Andy Tillerson's voice does sound very similar to Peter Hamill, so I can't help but think of Van der Graaff Generator when I listen to this one. Okay, um, as well as doing his own band, which we will talk about in a bit, 
Guy Manning also worked together with Andy Tillerson on Andy Tillerson's new project, uh, which started around 2003. And they teamed up with, just a moment, David Jackson. That's right, David Jackson from Van der Graaff Generator. And they started a new project called The Tangent. And then Andy Tillerson wanted to expand the project, make it bigger. So they brought in Roynia Stolt from The Flower Kings, as well as uh, Jonas, Jonas Reingold. And also from The Flower Kings drummer, Zoltan like this. I'm afraid I'm not going to say it correctly, so please read. <laughs> okay, and so they started The Tangent, and the very first album, The Music That Died Alone, came out, and this album really... Let me say this. I was interested in buying a tan Tangent album for a while, but I didn't find anything that I thought, this is exactly what I want to hear right now. But then I went out and bought this one, because you know, I'm exploring Guy Manning's career, and the music on here, there's some really captivating music, and I was just listening to some of it again last night. So, The Tangent, I'm going to pick up a couple more of their albums later on. But anyway, Guy Manning was here from 2003 to 2009, appeared on the first five Tangent albums, so you can definitely check those out if you're interested. Okay, let's move on to Guy Manning's career with Manning. This band basically existed from 2000, sorry, 1999 to 2014, during which time they recorded 15 studio albums. Now, a couple of these are actually two-parters. There's um, Manning Acoustic and Manning Acoustic 2, which is in turn a kind of cover, acoustic, unplugged cover albums of Manning songs. Then they also had one, well, let's talk about that one after. Let's, let's get started here. Um, the oldest album that I have of Manning here, I actually just got it this week. This is Friday morning. I got this on Tuesday. I listened to it for the first time on Wednesday and a little bit more on Thursday. This is Manning, A Matter of Life and Death, The Journal of Able Man. Now, who is Able Man? Well, before you start searching the internet, I can tell you. Able Man is a character from one of the songs off the debut album which I think was called Tall Stories for Small Children. I might have it slightly wrong, but anyway, um, that is a, a collection of songs, each telling a story. And Abel Man, apparently, as I've read, is a character in one of those stories. And so now Manning went ahead and did a full album about his adventures. And there is a lot of catchy, interesting, wonderful music on here. And I'd like to feature The Dream. The Dream starts off beautifully, very, beautiful pretty music almost like a sunrise and then suddenly changes into this upbeat rock track but we're going to listen to something a little bit later on in the song the dream Okay, the next song I want to feature from here is Silent Man. And of course, as I was listening to this, I was preparing, uh, thinking about what songs I wanted to feature in the video. And then when Silent Man came on, it was just like, I have to put this one in. Totally grabbed me right off the start. So let's listen to a little bit from Silent Man now. He's a man that can be Okay, um, next in uh, chronological order, the next Manning album I have is called Answers Tree. This album is a really interesting concept idea because they created a character called Dr. Jonathan Answer, and according to the back of the CD here, he was born, he will be born in 2089. And then what they did after creating that character and a story about him, they created a family tree for him. And the family tree goes all the way back to the first track, Margaret Montgomery, 
born in 1581, and each of the members of the family tree experienced some historic event or something that happened anyway around that time. And the third track, uh, William Barras, is actually about a mining disaster where the character, I'm presuming William Barras, is actually trapped in the mine after it has collapsed and he is not rescued. We know how that story ends. Anyway, I'd like to feature the first track, Margaret Montgomery, because that's a beautiful start to the album. Let's listen to a little bit from that track now. Right, and now that I've talked about William Barris, I'd like to feature a little bit from that song. This is the part after the big instrumental solo part, and then we go into the situation in the mine after the, I don't know if it's an explosion or a collapse, but anyway, our hero, our protagonist, is lying there in the debris. Let's listen to that part now. The final Manning album I'd like to talk about is also the final release. Uh, was it 24, 2014? 2013? Uh, the Root, The Leaf, and The Bone. I've heard a lot of really good things about this album. It's one of the higher rated ones on Prog Archives. I really like this one more than the others. The others are very good. Any one of the, either of them, I would recommend. But this one here, first time I heard it, this is also my first Manning album. I thought it's very nice. I can really enjoy this. But after listening to it again and again and starting to make notes what songs to feature for this video, I found it was really difficult to choose just three songs because just about every track on here had parts that I thought were worth sharing. So we're going to start with The Root, The Leaf, and The Bone, the first track, the title track, and just feature part of that. But it is actually quite a long song. I think it's over eight minutes and it has many different musical motifs in it. So we're going to just listen to a small part of it here. Okay, I had trouble choosing between track four, The Forage, or track five, that's Forage, not Forage, Forage, and track five, Old School, but I'm going to go with Old School because I really like this saxophone and brass melody, so let's listen to a bit from Old School. <laughs> The final track I want to feature from The Root, The Leaf, and The Bone is The Huntsman and The Poacher. This is another case, I mean, they're all like this, all these, all these songs tell some stories, but this is a case of a huntsman who spies a poacher, and then the huntsman sets out to get the poacher. Interesting story, interesting music, let's give it a listen to this one. And then he'll be back on the road to his home and his wife. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it will be over. 
In 2017, Guy Manning put together a new band, and the base of the band is, well, base, I say this, and then I say Dan Mash, who's the bass player. Okay, that was not an intended pun. But anyway, the basic core of the band is Dan Mash on bass, Sean Timms on keyboards, and Merrick Arnold, clarinet, saxophone. He also does play keyboards. I'm not sure if he plays keyboards with Dominic. But anyway, um, in episode six, we talked about Sean Timms and Merrick Arnold, and so we already talked about Dominic's debut album on track from 2017, and we featured some of the music from that. So I won't go into that one. I'll just remind you if you don't remember, or if it's the first time for you to watch this, this is a really splendid album. And to follow up a splendid album, we go on with another splendid album. This is Dominic's second album, just released. I think the official release date was October 2018. So. The time of this recording, still October. In Flight. Now, this album here, while, while the first one was more about the human condition in relation to the present environmental conditions, talking about um, extinction of uh, species or other things, um, In Flight is more about migrations. And it could be physical migrations, families moving from one place to another could also be emotional or dream, like visiting places in dreams, and also remembered, thinking back to times. That's the basic theme of In Flight. It is a wonderful companion album to On Track. The two follow the same kind of musical course, but have, of course, very distinct songs. The first song to really jump out at me from this one here was The Crawler. And The Crawler is a song about our imaginations, our dark imaginations, when we feel fear about something or worry, how our imaginations play on our fears and actually can make things much worse for us. And what I really like about that song is the chorus has this very beautiful, catchy, upbeat, pop-like chorus. And yet the lyrics are actually quite dark. And I'd like to read out just part of the lyrics here. In one part of the chorus, it goes, Dead fingers talk, dead fingers whisper, dead fingers claw at one million eyes. You and uh, you are a fragile thing. You and your kind dissolve so easily, and death beats its wings for you. This sounds like the lyric to some kind of maybe almost black metal song or something, and yet it is sung to this very upbeat, catchy chorus with some beautiful um, alto sax thrown in as well. It's lovely. So anyway, the first song I want to feature is The Crawler and that part of The Crawler. Among other terrific tracks on this album, six in total, the last one is The Big Eastern, and it's in three parts, which have been actually divided into three tracks on the CD. Um, this is a fantastic, epic piece, and it tells a story. What, I, what I'm going to do is I want to read to you from The Prog Report, um, an interview Guy Manning did recently with The Prog Report, and I'm going to tell you what he had to say about The Big Eastern. I had an idea about how hard it must have been in rural, poorest China for a young family living a subsistence life, literally having to get on their hands and knees to pull the crops from the undernourished soil. Once I had them in my mind's eye, I wanted to contrast how a group of teenagers, same age, had it living in New York. Same age means the same period, same time period, they're obviously not parents. Anyway. Um, had it living in New York and compare East with West. That is part one, Cruel Skies. The Chinese farmers there also deal with natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, etc. And so a migration started to move them from their homelands to the west coast of America, San Francisco, Chinatown. Part two, The Shaking Earth, describes the natural upheavals from nature's point of view. 
Part 3, A Life in Chinatown, sees the new generations of the immigrants now living in the West and finding it hard to reconcile their traditional ways of life with a creeping and insistent modernization found in their new life and settings. The new generations did find it hard to balance and stay true, and so, inevitably, trouble ensued. The events of the Golden Dragon Massacre, mentioned in the song, actually happened with Zhou Fong and his gang being held accountable. I do tend to really research the ideas behind the stories and lyrics to make them informed and accurate, and also to allow me more freedom to set the scene without having to be too prescriptive and linear. Those are Guy Manning's words about the Big Eastern. What I really love about this is in part one, near the beginning, there is this beautiful part of Chinese style music. Now there is a Chinese group called the Twelve Girls Band, which are 12 women um, who play traditional Chinese instruments. And they play traditional songs as well as modern pieces, some of them cover, some of them original. And they are backed by supportive instruments such as drums, guitar, bass, keyboards, and so on. But I really love the sound of those traditional Chinese instruments and the style of the music. And so I was so pleased to hear some of that in this song, The Big Eastern. So I want to feature, first of all, part of that from part one under Cruel Skies. Okay, so I want to feature one more part here from the Big Eastern. Um, as I said, it's, a, it's almost like 29 minutes long, I think, so it's just loads of music. And I might say also that I feel Sean Timms's influence in here because there is a lot of world music style, which we can hear on Sean Timms's uh, band Southern Empire, as well as in his previous band Unitopia. So let's feature some other music here from the Big Eastern. <laughs> Alright, that wraps it up for Guy Manning, and I suspect the video is starting to get a little bit long, so we're going to just take a break and come back in part two.